On this episode of American Travelers, we're cruising New Zealand and Australia. We'll be visiting many beautiful spots like Belfort Sound, the quaint seaside town of Akaroa, and climbing Mount Maunganui. We travel the world looking for fun and new adventures. I'm Carrie. I'm Dave. Oh, we made it. Welcome to American Travelers. Dave grew up as a professional drummer before he went into the video production world as a sound mixer. Carrie followed her mother's footsteps as a nurse. She loves distance running and even finished two 100-mile races. Our purpose is to show awesome destinations and share our new adventures. We've got a bunch of great stops to show you. We'll give some tips on how to budget your trip. Along with some history and culture of each destination. So come join us on American Travelers. So today we're heading out on our cruise in Holland, America. Before checking into our room, we do a little exploring around the ship. There's all kinds of activities on the ship, like an art auction, America's Test Kitchen, gaming, fantastic lounge music, and a host of entertainers. On the Lido deck, you can treat yourself to a spa or just relax in these heated lounge chairs. How about a game of ping pong or a giant game of chess? And now, the most favorite part of any cruise, the buffet. This one was excellent. Every night we had an exquisite dinner, followed by a workout the next day. We wanted to learn more about shore excursions after seeing Kelly's presentation. Hi, my name's Kelly. I'm the Exploration Central Guide here on Holland America's Nordam. My role on the ship is really to get out, explore all the ports, so that I can give you personal recommendations about all the coolest things to see and do. Kelly, we're an active couple and we'd like to know what we could do on our first stop. Well, our first stop is Mount Maunganui. And Mount Maunganui is an actual mountain, 750 feet tall. So if you're an active couple, you may want to either walk around it or walk up it. On the way up, there's a lot to see. Take a look down there. I guess this is a trail that goes around Mount Maunganui. We made it to the top. So worth it. This climb up here is magnificent and the views are incredible. After you hike up, you may want to come back down and do a little paddle boarding on the water. Hi, I'm Nevin. I'm from Mount Cats and Yaks, which is a small kayak, catamaran and paddleboard company here in Mount Maunganui, New Zealand. So Dave and Carrie came to visit me today. They're on a paddleboard at the moment, but earlier they took out the Hobie Eclipse, having quite a good run and heading up towards the beautiful mount just up the beach there. It's time for Dave to try his hand at paddleboarding. <laughs> so I guess paddleboarding isn't my thing. We take a tender boat to our next port of call. We're at the quaint seaside town of Akaroa. The turquoise water is so beautiful and the air is super clean. After looking at the EXT tour guide, we really want to go to the Giant's House. The Giant's House is a world-class mosaic garden artistic experience that I can't even describe to you. And here we are. Wow, this is so unique. It must have taken years to build these sculptures. We're at the top of the property at the Giant's House, and this is a great vantage point. You can see all of the artwork and the beautiful grounds. Makeup, camera, action. Next, we head back to the bay and check out some of the local shops in town. So what's that shop? Well, it's the antique and thrift shop, so they have anything and everything in there. We stop at this cool little coffee shop. Everywhere you look, there are these little B&Bs kind of nestled into these hills, and they're like little, little, perfect little tea gardens, English tea gardens. Hi, I'm Tim from uh, Akaroa. Here we are, my beautiful wife Jackie over there. We've got a B&B &B called French Bay House here in Akaroa. It's a 113 Rue Jolie. Beautiful, built in 1874. We've got four uh, guest suites. We love having people come and stay. Coming up. It's time to leave Akaroa and go back to where our trip started, Auckland, New Zealand. We explore this beautiful city before taking our cruise. It's a good idea to get travel insurance. So look for a company that will reimburse you later if you have to pay cash or credit for services on the spot. I always wanted to come to this place and here we are, Auckland, New Zealand, and we're down at the pier. It's such a nice day here at the bay. I wonder what all the fuss was about. Hope they got it resolved. Auckland is one of the most popular cities in New Zealand with over 1,600,000 people. The harbor area is full of restaurants and shops to check out. 
We took a little break in these comfy chairs. Here in Auckland, we understand there's an ice cream shop, world renowned, called Giappo. So here we are, and we're going to try this ice cream. You know it's good because there's a long line and you have to wait. This is where the magic happens, huh? <laughs> so this kitchen, this is where all the ice creams are being put together. They also um, make all the bakeries and things like that. Oh, the wow. bread. And if you like, I can also show you upstairs. What's where upstairs? Making, uh, chocolate tears, making oh. the chocolate tears. Oh, sure. Well, this is upstairs. This is our chocolate tears. We love chocolate mm, at the moment. That. That's our raspberry and Play downstairs. Isn't that awesome? Well, today's my birthday, and this is a special treat. Mm. That's good. It's really good. It's kind of a got a toasted um, crust on it, and um, a little bit of nuts in there. That's awesome. Yeah, this is special and they put a lot of detail in this. So I have the fresh strawberry cream and they gave us a lot of samples to try before we actually made this big decision. And my big decision was strawberry, strawberries and cream. I can see why this is ranked one of the top 10 ice creams in the world. Leaving the ice cream shop, we see this unusual bike. Is that the way you ride it? Backwards like that? Like this. That is so cool. It's called a yike bike. <laughs> On to our next stop. Here we are in downtown Picton. Perfect little port side town. We take a look around and find that comfortable seating and lots of it is the name of the game around here. The building architecture here is very nice. Yeah, very, Carrie's very sporting nice her new hat. And Mr. Dave got a new hat too. You betcha. We always try to get a nice hat from whatever country we go to. It's always fun to sport it around home. At this craft fair, we see baby bibs, cute lammies, and handmade wood items. Next, we go to the train station and find this band playing some cool tunes. Isn't this cute? I've never seen a train so cute. We're taking a ride on this vintage steam train called the Marlboro Flyer to the town of Blenheim in New Zealand's wine country. The band has moved next to the train and sending us off with a clever Beatles song. You've got a ticket to ride. Cheers. The scenery is spectacular and you can smell the burning of the coal that produces the steam that makes her go. You can see there's a ton of livestock in the area, and the sound of the train has them running for cover. Here we are. Time for a little break and a glass of New Zealand wine. I retired from the railway and then come and work for these people. I wouldn't mind shoveling some coal. I could do it. I don't think they pick up hitchhikers. Well, that's the end of the line for us. We get back to the port by bus, which is a fun ride as well. Coming up, our next port of call is the beautiful Melford Sound. When coming to New Zealand, Melford Sound is a must-see, and the best way to see it is the front of a cruise ship. Another way to come is on a small charter boat. Either way, you are in for a real treat. Now we're in Tasmania. What's Hobart noted for? Hobart is a really interesting city. It is the capital of the state of Tasmania, and they happen to have an incredible wildlife sanctuary. 
Today we're at Bonnarong Animal Sanctuary. And we're ready to see some Tasmanian devils. Do you remember the Tasmanian devil cartoon? <laughs> they actually looked a little different than I expected, but I see how they got their name. What's nice here at Bongarong is you can feed the kangaroos and... I'm gonna pet this little guy. Here we go. See, he likes it. This is a baby oh. bear-nosed wombat. And um, she's here because she's an orphan. And if you notice, she's extra special. She's got a white paw. Oh. Oh. We don't know how that happened. <laughs> something, something went wrong somewhere, didn't it, darling? When it comes to kangaroo arguments, things get settled the old-fashioned way. You have sea fighters may learn a few tricks from these guys. Now we're hopping along to Australia. Another stop on our cruise is Melbourne. And when you spell it, it looks like Melbourne, but uh, locals pronounce it Melbourne. What's your name? Michael. Michael, yep. tell me what you do here. Okay, I do the bus supervising and we look after all you great people on the cruise ships all the time. From the port, our bus driver takes us to City Central, where we're excited to see what Melbourne has to offer. Looks like they have a great rail system, and this view looks like something you'd see in Venice. Check out this Victorian lamp pole. The words below mean, we gather strength. We're here during Christmas, and we see the awesome Christmas tree in front of this beautiful church. After taking a closer look, it's made from a thousand LED lights. The South Bank area of Melbourne is the site of the Arts Centre Melbourne, a performing arts complex, and the National Gallery of Victoria, where there's Australian and Indigenous art. Located in the same complex as ACMI, which stands for the Australian Center for the Moving Image. We're going inside to take a closer look. You know, you learn a lot about the history of filmmaking in here, clear from like motion pictures without sound, now the added sound, how they added color, and then there's a lot of these interactive type uh, displays in here that you can have a lot of fun with. We start with pre-cinema. Basically, a photographer would take a still photo and then these playback devices would show them in order, similar to a slideshow presentation. The next piece is a motoscope from 1898. Photo cards strung on a round reel created one minute's worth of viewing time. The motoscope was popular at fairs and seaside resorts. This is a Marley's photographic rifle from 1894. Marley built it to better study the way animals and humans move. The camera could take 12 to 30 photos per second. Who would have ever guessed a camera would look like a rifle? Next, there's the arrival of sound in motion pictures and the different contraptions that recorded sound. Cartoons were a big hit at the time. Walt Disney created character motion by stacking glass paintings on top of each other. Such classics as The Big Bad Wolf and The Three Little Pigs were made this way. Then the arrival of television came in the late 20s. See if you can recognize any of these stars. And then there was the first drive-in theater located in Camden, New Jersey in 1953. Our next stop is the proximity area of the museum. We see a lot of kids having a great time here. If you are of a certain age, this may remind you of the days when Led Zeppelin and The Who were on the radio.
Looks like Carrie is giving it a try too. And of course, Dave's got to give it a try. How about a little slow motion fun? You know, Melbourne's a big city. We heard there's four million people here. And when you're walking the streets, it feels like it. Our tour guide mentioned that there's 170 different languages spoken here in Melbourne. We continue our journey through Melbourne on this trolley. The buildings here are outrageous, very modern and full of glass. The building designs are futuristic and abstract. The trolley is a good way to see the city. You can get off and on, explore an area, then pick up another trolley as they run every 15 minutes. You're looking at a very serious traveler of the next generation. The bus drivers and myself always welcome you. We hope to see you back here again in Melbourne soon. Coming up, we take you to Sydney, Australia. Sydney, Australia. Sydney is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. We're in the magnificent city of Sydney, Australia. We take a ferry ride across the bay to the Tarongo Zoo. There's plenty of fun activities for kids and kids of all ages. We see many of the native birds and animals that live here. Hey buddy, you got anything to eat? Air cats are very family oriented and they work as a team. So one will stand on a rock and watch for danger. They all hunt together. One uh, meerkat stays in the den to take care of the babies at all times. So they really are, um, it takes a village mentality. Our next stop is the Marine Life Show. Shout out whiskers. One, two, three. Whiskers! Now that you're down here, should we have a quick peek down there? Did you see any fish? No. Is there something we can do about that? And that makes me too very happy, Seal. So let's see that happy face, buddy. Back to the rest of the park, we're in the large animal section. These giraffes are so beautiful. They can keep an eye on things happening in Sydney while having lunch. Next, we go to the popular Manly Beach. Manly Beach is such a fun beach, swimming and surfing. This is what it's all about here. At Manly Beach, there's a trail that goes to the North Headland. We're heading there now. This is a fun paved trail to hike. You see people of all nationalities along the way and a ton of kids having fun in the water. We diverted off the trail to climb these rocks. Yeah, I'm filming you. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. Sure looks funny, but she's got a tough climb. Carrie's got a lot of camera gear in that backpack, and it weighs a lot. Well, it's really nice just to sit here and take this all in. our hike to the north head of Sydney Harbour National Park. There's a lot of steps going uphill, but the path is well thought out and maintained. With a little bit of effort, you get a great view. As we're walking, we've run across this fort. A fort? Okay, and here we come. I'm gonna check this out. You should see this. There's the youngins. That's me. <laughs> World War II. It looks like they may have some kind of revolving gun that went on in all these different pits. Oh, look at that down there. Oh, yeah, this is like to work for safety.
It's been a fun day so far, but it's time to go back to our hotel and take a break. After a short rest, we go back to the Sydney Harbor area by their train system. Our stop is called Circular Quay. There's a lot of tourists here and cruise liners that come into the port, just like the one we came in on. The main attraction in Sydney is the Sydney Opera House, which we're going to check it out. The inside is just as magnificent as the outside. We go back to the streets and find this amazing juggler. Uh, kids, never ever try this at home. Try it at Grandma's house, yeah! She will let you do anything. <laughs> That's where I learned. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Come on, guys, I'm juggling fire! I, I know it's not much, but you can't do it. <laughs> I'll try a couple tricks. Under the leg. Under the other leg. Under the middle leg. <laughs> my brother taught me that trick. He's now my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Crisscross some chops. After that great performance, we have dinner, then come back to the Opera House for a show. Tonight, the show is titled The Unbelievables, the greatest variety show on earth. We would highly recommend coming to Sydney for your next vacation. Thanks for watching American Travelers.